So the other thing, if you guys don't have any more questions, but the other thing I was going to talk about, I was going to start with the basic types. questions okay so we'll move forward okay so now we know how the functions are done uh, going to start seeing how um, the, the variables are okay and the first thing let's start with the how they're defined so this works like TypeScript in the that you have it's like you read it so you have a variable a of type int and the value is free okay and so let's just put here a, uh, like this. Right? And from the, f uh, you also have a function that allows you to see the type of something. So you can just go type off. And so the thing is, we're writing there an int, but the type is S64. So the types here that the language has is U8, U16, U32, and U64. And it also has the signed version, so that's unsigned, and then it has the signed versions. And int is simply an alias, it's like a type they have two u6 to s64 so it's mostly like because people are used to it and i think that the train of thought was that you know if you just want an int you don't really care what it is you just use int but if somebody puts there no this is an s32 or an s64 then maybe it's very important that that's an actual s64 right so uh, you can uh, have other uh, variables like defined like this right um so let's say that you want you can also do hexadecimal stuff so let's say right and then you can print that and basically you know it's what we expect uh, if you have a variable that is smaller then what you want to assign, so let's say that you want C that is equal to B, right? When you build it, you get an error. So this does not compile. It tells you that uh, there's loss of information. Okay, you're trying to fit 32 bits into 16 bits. Okay, and you need to explicitly cast. And so, if to cast at the moment, there's two ways. One is super weird, and I'm not sure if this is going to stay or not. But you can just do this, and it casts to what it casts whatever is on the right to what's on the left. Super weird. Not sure if this is going to stay, but you can just go cast as 16, right? And um, this will just work. And notice that we got a warning, okay? So this is at runtime, it gets you a warning that you're trying to cast, but it failed because it's not in that range. You're trying to cast something that's outside that range, right? It still worked, like the program still executed. You have C with uh, minus one, but it's giving you this warning, okay? So there's a way that you can just, uh, and I'm not sure if the nomenclature would continue, but you can just say, hey, I want to, to ignore, I know what I'm doing, you can just go no check, and then it just works. It doesn't print out that warning. Um, so this is is useful because it helps you find those cases, right? But you can also like say no, no, no. I know what I'm doing, and I just want to clear that. And something that is also very, very cool, and that's why I like a lot this language is because you see that this is being done by somebody that is actually doing things, 
somebody that understands the problems that we have is I love bitmasks you know a lot of you guys <laughs> mock the way I love bitmasks but working with bitmasks is also always so error prone because you like put one more F or one less S or one thing to the left or whatever and this language allows you to simply go into a literal and just go boop, and you just separate it and if you build this it just works it ignores all the things if you want you can put them you know however you want however it's good for you to divide your your, your mask and it just works but you may think oh but this is stupid bitmasks are stupid you're old and whatever well what if you have a number right you can do the exact same thing right and this is so helpful it's one of those little things that nobody really cares but I bet you that everybody at once tried to mock data into stuff they put the wrong value because they miscalculated the numbers or the number of, of zeros or something like that so these are the, the really the, the cool things that this language gives that I don't know maybe I just appreciate these things way too much more than other people but it's ugh, it's so to me it's so joyous to, to see these things <laughs> any questions guys anything before I move to floats. Floats going to be fast, I hope. Too old. Who's Karator? Do I know Karator? <laughs> I'm uh, 37. When you usually see the, 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 how do you say? Oh, thank you. Mm, I like Karator. Um, <laughs> when you're, uh, when you see the average of ages in, in, in the studio, you see, <laughs> you see how 37 is like outside of that margin. So basically, if you have no more questions, going to move forward with, um, the example with floats, yeah. Are there other modifiers similar to check that you can use for functions? There's other things that I'm going to talk about functions, but they're a bit different. Or is that a special one just for casting? So this one, this one here is for casting, and I'm not sure if these nomenclatures will be final because this is a bit weird, right? Because you you had something that was here, you had something that is like a function, right? And I think here, but I'm not sure, I think that this is basically an operator, so you're kind of cascading that, right? But there are a few things that you can do for functions, but the syntax is a bit different like this. The syntax is more like uh, hash something. But the, the there's there may be other things, but at the moment it's very difficult because we didn't really get super detailed information. We got like uh, that zip, and you, we just unzip it and we... we you know, you hit build and you expect things to break and then it works and you're like, what? <laughs> and you just keep moving with that. So a lot of the stuff is stuff that, you know, we're just digging through the code, like uh, Oz today, he, he caught that, you know, that thing was happening with the import. So a lot of these things are just uh, things that as we're exploring, we're, we're seeing, right? Um, and I'm not sure, I think he's going to do more how-tos and stuff like this, but I'm not sure when he's going to give us that stuff. And for example, at the moment, when you go through code, you have stuff like this, that you can do something like this, at test, some kind of annotations. And I think that initially the, the idea of this was that, okay, this is marked as a test function so that you would have a testing system or whatever. But at the moment, as far as I know, all the at stuff is just removed or ignored for now. So they don't do anything. But uh, there's a few that I know that uh, work for functions. Uh, but Hopefully we'll, we'll go through that later, a bit later. So if you guys have any questions, just paste it there and I'll check it. Uh, going back again to the example now, I just removed the int stuff so we have it clearer. We're doing a float, right? Oh, and just, just for the sake of it, yeah, the type is float32. So again, float is just um, 
type uh, an alliance for float 32 so you have float 32 and you have float 64 there's no more doubles so it means this is f uh, future proof uh, <laughs> I wonder how C is going to handle that later if they're going to go triples or something like this uh, a few things to note here we're declaring it and we're not assigning it so by default this language when you declare something and you don't assign anything the default value is going to be zero and this is uh, very important because a lot of times you have those small errors in the lower level languages that you know it's hard to track what's going on and whatever just because you just have some garbage in some function but this means that basically you know the way it works is it like puts an instruction to put a value in a certain spot right and sometimes we don't want to do that. Sometimes we just want to go like, oh no, I'm going to assign it here. I'm, you know, I'm going to go. A is actually, uh, you know, it's actually like 3.0. Uh, so I, you don't want that. You know, if you're going to that level of performance and you don't want, you don't want to waste time writing a zero so that you override it. Here you can explicitly say just ignore it, right? This means that whatever this fun this variable is not going to be initialized so it will have whatever you have there and here most likely it's just going to show zero because that's how it works but uh, well now it doesn't show because I put a free here but most likely here it's just going to be zero but in theory this can be whatever is there right and this actually is interesting because this will open up some opportunities later on in other stuff so we'll go back to that uh, kind of, of thing um, something I wanted to also to point out that is really I don't know I appreciate these kind of things <laughs> maybe more than I should is that when you're learning a new language you or, or when you're learning anything right you just try stuff out you see what works and it feels bad to be punished just for trying something right so for example if you put an F here right and you try to to build this and this is something that annoys the hell out of me why you have to have F's in in uh, in C sharp or whatever, it's it's just like who decided that you know the the floats that most people use are the one that you need to put an extra thing. It's so annoying. But when you run it, you know it gives you clear message of error. You know most of the time this is just a funny one because it just mocks how you have to suffix f to know that it's a float. But you know throughout the stuff, whenever we we do an error the message is so clear of what's the error where it is and you know and then probably see like what are the options it's like look you were trying to do something I didn't understand but I found these possible options it's really so much better than C and, and C++ um, but I wanted to show just something else that was you know you, in the language you can also do this you can also create something but you ignore the type right you don't pass the type and the type is inferred by whatever um, whatever the compiler sees so here I'm going and I'm putting a 3.0 so when I build B is it a 3.0 and it's a float 32 okay if you put a number that is very big right you run it and now it's 64 so when the compiler notices that you're going to get precision loss it assigns a 64-bit float to it and this is super interesting to me right that you don't there just knows how to distinguish this but you know you can still force it right you can still go okay I want no I want to float 32 from 32 and you'll get it but you will start to get rounding errors right and the same thing is like oh I, if I want you know no but I'm dealing with a really small thing but I want it to be a float 64 you can just also force it right and you get a float 64 so right so you don't lose anything but most of the time it will just infer it and it's fine floats done oh no one more thing mm -hmm. so so far we've been looking at variables so you define you have the, the the name you have the the colon equals right you may not or not have the type constants 
is, in fact, we've defined constants already. If you've been paying attention, when we're defining a function, we are defining a constant. And this is what defines a constant. So if I go C 3.0, we get a constant, like you cannot assign it. And this is simply omitting the type. It's the exact same syntax, you're just changing that equal to a colon. And to me this is so, and I'll talk more about this in the function part, but this is so nice because it's so clean, it makes sense from a logic point of view, if you're trying to understand how things are built and just you know, everything is kind of built the same way. It's just easier for you to learn something. I think it's, it's I don't know. I, maybe I'm just super excited about things that don't matter to anybody. <laughs> Anything you guys would want to ask about this stuff? Should we just keep plowing through? There's a few types of arrays. So the first one is a static array. And again, it's like uh, the same way that you find. I want a variable with that name of type array, but it's static, so I pass it a number. Okay, I know who Karata is. Fucking Vrubo. <laughs> so you pass a number and you pass the type. Okay? Uh, so now here I can just go um, a equals uh, sorry a zero equals four and if I just go print a and Right, so this is just the same thing. It's a variable, now it's an array of uh, ints with three, the one is zero, it's fine, right? Makes sense. Um, there's another way to define static arrays, and I'm not sure if this is going to stay or not, but basically the static array is just it's set, right? You cannot change the size. Whatever you define it with is what you have. So there's another way of doing them that is just, and this I'm not sure if it's going to, to, to continue, but you can do something like this. Right, so, and this is the thing that I'm not sure if it's also going to say, because I would assume that, you know, that this would work, but actually it doesn't, because this is kind of the same thing as the thing we're talking up here, but for some reason you need to, 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 to explicitly say here what's the type but again if we just print it this is the exact same thing right exact same thing um, and by the way the other ones right because we when we initialize that top one we just set the first one, so the other ones are zero, right? Which makes sense. Um, no. As far as I know, you have to do it yourself. Maybe there's some kind of function, because again, you know, you need to, to find this kind of stuff. But at the moment, like this is printing you the type of the array. You don't have something that just prints the array. As far as I know, you don't have anything like that. But it's you'll see just how easy it is to do, to do this kind of stuff. It's it's pretty pretty simple. And I just wanted to mention another thing is that if you do, you know, static arrays one equals the other, 
you're going to get an error, right? It's uh, it it's trying to copy to something bigger, something smaller, and it's going to give you an error and, and won't allow you to do this. But if you want to do the opposite, right? If you want if you have something smaller or equal of the, of the same size and you just do it again, then it's fine, right? It's just going to copy up to the length and just ignores the rest. Um, so this is static arrays, and then we have the dynamic, right? Because a lot of time we want something that we just go like, oh, I have no idea how many there's, these are going to be, right? So the syntax is again similar, you just want an array, but you say that it's a dynamic one, and the way you do it is this, right? So now if I go... Uh, yeah, let's leave it like So now if we run this, we get an error with a bound check failed, and we then just have an exception. So we created an array, but at the moment this array has no size, right? It has nothing. So when we try to access around uh, outside, it's just going to blow up. And the way you add things to the array is because one thing to understand is also these are not objects, these are not like classes, so nothing has methods. And if you're looking for a language with classes, you're going to be disappointed. So you basically have functions to do stuff, right? So in this case, you do array add, and then let's say 10, right? And so when we try to do this, it fails, right? And I think, you know, this is what I meant with things being very clear, right? It tells you that the procedure did not match the possible overloads. It tells you what it is, and then it tells you what it think it might be, right? Why doesn't this work? So in C++, you, you have three things. You have a number by value, right? So whenever you pass something, it goes by value, it creates a copy, and then you inside that function, you're altering that copy. There's the, the pointer, right? So you just say, okay, I pass a, an ad a position to the thing that I want to change, and then when you change the content of where it's pointing to, then you can change the original, right? And there's by reference, right? So it basically kind of just hides the pointer, but in, in fact, what's happening is it, that's basically a pointer, hidden pointer, right? I guess to make people feel safe or something. So in this language, there's only by value and by pointer, like this language, you see, it's cle it clearly does not want you to be afraid of pointers, so you need to pass a pointer to this array in order to change the array. And this is going to look weird to people coming from C++ because the way you pass a pointer is, uh, it's, it's basically the way you define pointers in C++, right? So in C++ you kind of go like int C, right? So it's like, it's an integer pointer to C, doesn't make much sense, but anyway, so it's a pointer to C. I pass a pointer to C, right? And basically you see that this one is much more complicated because it has how many elements it has. It has the pointer to what the memory it is, how much it allocated, and this we'll just ignore for now because, well, I haven't even explored this stuff, but there's this concept in this language that you can have allocators, and you can say, I want to reserve memory for this thing but in a specific place in memory right not just anywhere in the heap so you can have things segregated which is really important like if you're doing something in games it's really really important um, and I think this is it with this array dynamic arrays but there's one more there's an array view and an array view is Think of it as just it, it's like like a view in 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 um, uh, like a UI, right? It's you have your data and you have a view to your data, and basically that's what an array view is. And when you define it, you just say it's like this, so it doesn't have any constant or uh, any dot dot here. Uh, so you just go like this, and then you can point it to anything, right? So for example, we can point it to B, let's say, right? And then uh, we can just go 0 equals 100. Then if we print B again,
you have that B change. So it's basically you're creating like a, a, a point, a controlled pointer because you have the boundary checks and whatever to whatever data. And the reason also why this is very important is that basically in this language, strings are um, strings are just array views. Okay, so when you're passing around strings in this language, you're just going to be passing around small things. You're not actually going to be, to be allocating memory and copying everything, and you, you know, so it's it's much much faster to pass strings around in this language. <clears throat> Any questions about this? I feel like a teacher. Any questions that nobody says anything because everybody wants, you know, to not be pulled to the board? Good question. Uh, good question. I haven't tried them. Uh, we can try. And let's just guess, yeah? So we'll try this first. Um, okay, that doesn't work. So what if we try this? I guess that's it. to the dreaded arrays, uh, pointers. So pointers, like I was saying, it, and this is more literal, right, uh, the, than the C uh, way. You just go, I have a variable A, it's, of a, it's a pointer to int, right? What we expect right we create something we didn't assign anything to it so it just has zero and this is the same as doing this there's the concept of, of null in this language it basically just means a null pointer a, a zero pointer right um, so the way because now we have something like this right but we cannot access its content right it has nothing so we need to do reserve some memory, allocate some memory for this. And in, in C++ you have the new operator, here you don't have an operator, you have a function. So if I just go new int, right, you'll see that now it will, uh, bah, 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 bah. where is it? You'll see that now it just has a pointer to some memory somewhere, right? Um, and you can remove again these things and it will just figure out what it is. Right? It's just it's not a, an issue. Uh, so now comes also a bit of a weird thing: is how do you how do you do reference, right? Because in in C plus plus you do something like this, right? Uh, so here it's not this; it's this. Whoopa! It's this. It's like this operator, which I think I don't know, but I think that the idea was that. You're trying to siphon the the value the, the inside of it. I don't know. I have no idea why it is like this. Maybe he explains it in one of these streams, but I didn't see. So basically, yeah, that's it in terms of pointers. But we have a leap now, right? Because this is like a low-level language, and you you're responsible for all the memory allocated. 
So they also have something else that is another function that is a delete. Right? And now if we print A again, and we'll just avoid doing this. It's clear the memory, but it didn't clear the pointer. It's up to you to say this, right? Uh, and something that I also appreciate a lot in this language is because these things are very like uh, hidden in other languages. It's like a lot of times it's hard to understand what the hell is happening, right? What is this new happening? What doing? What is this array add doing? And you can just check it. You can just go on a find new where it's defined and we'll just ignore some of this stuff here but basically it allocates a memory of that type and then it just ignoring again this stuff it just goes set the memory to zeros clear the memory and just return a cast pointer to it right that's all it's doing uh, if you check the array add It just goes maybe grow, so basically it's going to check internally, like, do I need to allocate more memory? And then it just goes, okay, put that item, do a plus one. And this, I think, is it's really cool because it kind of demystifies a lot of what programming is these days when people try to encapsulate things in weird things. Here you see exactly what's happening, right? You kind of, uh, it kind of, you know, puts out everything in the open, right? And I think this is very, very interesting even as a, a learning language, if, if, even if you don't use this professionally, just you know, as an entry point to um, to programming language instead of entering like at I don't know C sharp or, or Java level, right? I'm not even sure what people are doing these days, but that was the trend back then, right? Like I think I was in, at my university. I think I was one of the few people that like got in with C plus uh, plus. Like then they just started switching to Java. Um, basically that's it, I guess. Don't have anything about warnings. Any questions, guys? Just making sure there's still people in the chat. Okay, there's still people here. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. It would be actually super funny that I just go here. It's just me. <laughs> there's no structs. This was planned for later. If you guys want to, we can just skip this stuff and we can go to the complex data types. At the moment, I was thinking strings, then flow stuff. So ifs, uh, uh, fors, and whatever. And then I I I I I functions, <laughs> and then complex types, which is like the structs. So in this uh, thing, there's nothing. Uh, show error after accessing value of a bad pointer. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Uh, well, let's just do it here. So, um, so you want something that just goes like. If I understand correctly, you want something like this, correct? Like that you tried to dereference the value. Right or or yeah okay. Um, it just explodes. There's nothing done. It's just it's it's like C plus plus. What about deleted? 
okay so let's assume that you want this oh I forgot to, to, to say something which is actually pretty cool so I'll use it here um, so let's say you, you do a new and then you want to do a delete right of P and then accessing P yeah you got whatever was there in the memory so it didn't crash which is also what can happen you can always happen right when you have the pointers in C++ you may not crash but if it's being used for something else you may crash so I think this is just a coincidence now maybe <laughs> debugging okay so at the moment the, the language is just this you have the J compiler and that's it okay you have no debugging tools and I thought well this is a bit annoying but then I thought well let me just try and hook up Visual Studio because in Visual Studio when you compile it, it generates the PDB and the XC so if you in Visual Studio you just say open a new solution and you go um, you select the, the, the EXE file mm -hmm. it's going to load that file as, as, a, as a solution so then you can open the J files there on Visual Studio you can put the breakpoints and you can fucking step through them it's much better than I expected there I haven't played around with it a lot but it goes like through everything you can inspect the values but the thing that was odd is for for example if it's a struct you will see the type of the struct for example vector free or whatever but the here the ints are like s64 but you will see something in the debugger like this you know and instead of seeing float um, 64 you're going to see double right I haven't played with it a lot I just tried it to see and let's put it this way it works much better than I expected because I just I, I don't know I was just expecting that you know it would be something like I don't know pointers to memory or something I don't know uh, and it and actually like you can open the thing see oh X has this value and Y has this value and Z has this like you can do that kind of stuff it's, it actually works pretty good so one of the things that I wanted to talk about that is amazing in my opinion is because one of the things that a lot of people don't like about this kind of memory allocation stuff is that you get, you know, you just, you have to do this, right? And you have tons of stuff here. You don't know what's going to happen. You forget if you have, if you have something that goes like, oh, if something, right? And this is, this happens, then here you also have to go, oh, delete it too, because I want to return here this is cumbersome right and this is one of those things that a lot of times you just miss something and or somebody changes the flow and all of a sudden it returns early and you just miss this stuff and this language has something really cool that I think I heard that go has too that you can just go but I think that the go version is not this as far as I know this version is fast okay because I think and again I don't know I haven't asked but I think that what this does is it just tells the compiler to execute, execute the code later. So the compiler is going to get here, instead of executing this, it's going to put this code to be executed whenever you leave the scope. So whenever you leave the scope, you're going to call whatever is here. And this can be something else. So it can be, it can be another block, right? It can be whatever you want. You can just go here oh right defer and you'll see that first it printed our pointer and then it printed defer and this is actually very cool and I was also like not sure is Visual Studio going to show this well but when you're stepping through code Visual Studio goes like tuk 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 and this goes back to the defer tuk 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 so it works it works really well even in debugging Anything else regarding the pointers or pointer to pointer is an asterisk asterisk p. So it's like you know it's like a C plus plus. So I guess that at some point you can have something like this. Opa. 
like a train of these guys, I guess. Right? Maybe at some point you need to do stuff like this. I don't know. 